Hey, hi, welcome in. Today is Monday the 5th of October 2020. My name is Mike Martin. Now, if you can cast your mind back, I think it was about, could be the end of June, beginning of July, somewhere around there. I mentioned that I had a customer board replacement to do, yeah? And I kept saying that, you know, as soon as it come, we'll do it. <laughs> well, in between that, a few things have happened, including the customers and with Amazon delivery, because the actual board that we decided on sort of like um, got snapped up before we could get it. And um, they said they didn't know when they were going to get any more deliveries. Anyway, they couldn't get any more, but they actually managed to, to get a, um, what they call a Amazon warehouse stock. And what that means is usually it's here. And it's the Asus M587L, 78L, I do beg your pardon, M Plus. This is, as you know, an old system. So, that being said, the board's here, but because it's an Amazon warehouse stock, I need to make sure the board works. Because if it doesn't, you only get a certain window to send it back. And then we can either take it from there, and then reach out to customers and say, what do you want to do? Do you want to carry on down this venture or do you just want to forget it and get a new system or whatever? So this this uh, street, well, this, this video is going to be done in, in two sections. Today, I'm just going to put the board on my test bench, make sure it works. If it works, then we're good to go. And in the second video, what I'll then do, you'll actually see me constructing the video. Yes, you may have picked up on the error there. I said constructing the video. What I really meant was to say, assembling the machine, yeah, assembling the system. Putting all the customer's parts back in so we can use his, reuse his, his CPU, his RAM, um, and that's basically it. So, let me show you. Here's my setup, my test bench. So, I've got my test bench, working on an antistatic mat, of course. It's a proper anti-static mat and it's even got the option if you want to use a, an anti-static rip strap you can just connect it to the corner here, there's a stud for it, you press clip it onto there, put your rip strap on, but if you handle your parts correctly you won't need to do that. So let's not digress anymore, let's jump in, get this board tested and then we'll know if we've got to return it to Amazon or not. So let's take it out. Okay. Let's take that out of the bag. It's not even taped down, see? We did the bike, this, this bag will be all taped down. You can see the bag is all smooth, it's not crinkled. So I can, I can see it's never been actually used. There you go. One Asus motherboard. So we're gonna put that on the test bench and see if it works. So I'll put, I put, uh, put RAM in there and CPU, just stick it. A heat, a heat sink on it. I won't even bother putting thermal paste on it because as I say this is just a test. So with further ado I'll get on with it so if I don't say anything don't worry I've not forgotten you there. So we'll just line that up. And one of the reasons why I like using this test bench as well it's actually got power switch, power and reset button. I only need the reset switch just to, to take it so I don't have to look for no um, Okay. Here's the client CPU. Right. I've got the testing power suppliers. This is one I took out of a system that um, was upgraded. Not really a very powerful supply, but it'll do for what we want. This is just for testing. So I'll keep this just for testing. I will replace this. I will replace this power supply. 
with um, a more modern one at a later date or if I get a system where they're swapping out the power supply uh, and they don't want to keep the power supply then I can use it as a tester but for now I've got this one so I'm glad I have so um, I'm going to want to put I want some connectivity between the keyboard and mouse. So I put my dongle there. This is my keyboard and mouse. Wireless, of course. Just move a few things out of the way. And all we need is some RAM. I've got two sticks of. That's all to see for you. I've got two sticks of DDR3 RAM, which is what this board takes. So you can see that it is. Getting on a bit in its years, this CP, this uh, system. Well, we've got quad quad dim slots, so this can run, so this will run in dual channel mode or quad mode. So I'm using the, the, the black slots, and we'll run it in dual channel mode. Now there's no, I'm not putting any hard drive on it as yet. So you can see, so I'm not putting any hard drive on it yet, but then what I'll do is um, I'll look up that RAM and we'll get some more order for him of the same, if, if possible, if not, then I'll probably just have to buy a, get a whole new set. You know, all the, all the same round for the for the quad channel. It's just for the CAS latency because obviously the CAS latency is an advantage. So there may still be some about, but it may it may not warrant for what they might want for another two two of these dims, if they're still available. It might be worth just getting the newer brand, the the, new, the newer latency. Right. Okay. So what we've we got here now. So we've got ramming, CPU and and cooler on there. I put my USB dongle from the keyboard and mouse there. It's an only one, so I just need the one dongle because it's tied together. Um, I've hooked up power supply. Yeah, so all I need to do now is just to find the power switch, which is this one. Stick it on here. Stick it on my front panel connector, which are these two here at the back. That should be it. Um, power! Power to the power. Power to the power supply. Power to the power supply. Uh, there goes the UU strike. Now uh, we get the U2 strike there. Right, it is in the off position, don't worry, I've checked. Right, we supply power to everything. Make sure nothing happens. Okay, out to everything. Screen's just lit up. Power indicator, there you go. That's just lit up. It's not on yet. Flip the power. That's good. I've just switched the power on and nothing's happened. We might say, why has nothing happened? Because if that board has started up when I put that power on, then obviously I could, it could have meant I had a short somewhere, so I could have someone behind the board shorting it, or I could have. You know, the switch could be, you know, not on the right pins or whatever, and you could have just started it up. So now, what I want to see is a post screen that will say, no boot device detected error. If it goes on, um, Fanny spinning. Screen's just gone green. Post. 
8K. Uh, it's a 3.6 gigahertz processor, DDR3, it recognizes that. Um, Delta run setup, F1 to run setup, there we go, so it was the batteries. Yeah, my bad. My bad, guys, it was the batteries, there we go. F1 to run setup. Now I want to see the pointer tools down here. Um, oh, right, there you go, right. The version of the BIOS is 0502. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I have checked that, and I think that is the latest BIOS for that, 2016. Um, let's hit BIOS flash. Do you want to start? Yes, okay. And it should, if that's 05, it is 0502, right? So that's, like, yes, 2016. That's the latest BIOS, and all the BIOS from that, so you can see from the age of this. You can see from the age of this, but it's quite old. Um, that was the last BIOS. I know it was. I do my research, guys. I do my research. Okay, so I'll press F10 to get out of that. Now it should, it should F10. Save configuration, yes. So F10. Now it should come to a screen and it says error, select boot drive and that. But there's no boot drive on there. I'm not setting no boot drive on that. I just want to make sure it works. It does. So, guys. So, now that we've satisfied the curiosity, my curiosity, and I now know that the board is working, I'm now going to assemble it in this case. Okay, so I've just done a quick reset, yes. I've now took me took the uh, motherboard off the test bench and I've got my motherboard lying on its box. We're going to now prep it and get it put in the case. Um, so for those of you who have not seen the first part of this video, it's called Don't Mess, Just Test. What I've got here is a motherboard replacement. The motherboard came from Amazon, but it was an Amazon warehouse stock, which means I wanted a, a, a set period of time to test it and get it returned if it was faulty. Um, anyway, we tested it. It was okay. And now this is the second part of the video where I'm now going to get it assembled in the case, ready to shift back to the customers. So, um, first thing I need to do is put some eyes on. Ah, I can see you now. <laughs> and then I'll get you set up so you can see what I'm going to do. And then there we go, so there I am on the table, let's just, just lower you a bit here, take this down a bit, there we go, there we go. So that's the board on the box, I'm going to clean up the CPU, sorry about that, just bear with me a second guys, just try and get you an angle. Now I do apologise on the first one, I know I did block your view a few times when I was messing about with that CPU cooler. It normally goes on easy, but sometimes it can just be a bit finicky and a bit fiddly. Um, so I do apologise. Anyway, let's get his... I try to zoom in too much, but obviously when I go in front of the camera, it tries to refocus. And sometimes the pictures go in and out. Right, there we go. So, first thing I'm going to do is um, clean up the CPU, because you've seen before I was handling it. Also, if you remembered, um, I made a classic error when I was testing this board in the fact that I had another CPU which I wanted to test to see if it worked. And the truth of the matter is that CPU did work, but I forgot to plug in the VGA cable into the, into the, the port and so I wasn't getting any video when I thought that the board uh, might have been faulty. Oh, not the board, the CPU might have been faulty. Well, actually it wasn't. And it turns out that that CPU was actually slower than the clients own this one that that's in at the moment. Uh, that CPU that I tested it was only a 3.2 gigahertz. This one's actually a 3.6, so this is a faster CPU. So obviously it's the customers, I'm leaving it in. But that other CPU, like I said, I've had it for a while hanging around from a system that I took out. I wasn't sure if it was still working because it's been floating around upstairs, being moved from pillar to post. But I'll keep it um, as a testing as a testing uh, processor. Should I uh, the need arise out of getting one of these systems? Um, you've got to remember, guys, that um, although systems are moved on, you younger you, you the younger generation, you have all the leanest, meanest, newest stuff. You want all the best, and it's understandable. There's no law against that. You know, I'm not saying don't. 
But you've got to remember, you've got a generation also of people that have grown up with, with certain systems and they've had for a while. They're used to it, they're familiar with it. It does a need, and like I said, this one does the customer's need, so he's quite happy with it. So, you know, not everybody, not everybody chases the newest thing. Some people are quite happy and content with what they've got. They're just happy to have it. Um, so, there you go, right. Now I've cleaned up the CPU, and now I'll just leave that a few seconds while the alcohol evaporates. Now, this is the original fan, it's a four pin fan. I, had, I have uh, two more AMD fans upstairs, bigger ones, with copper base, and I was, I was going to put it on. Um, but when I examined it, it was actually a three pin fan. So I thought to myself, well I'll actually take this fan off here and put it on the other the other one. With, you know, the other heat sink, which is deeper, deeper with a copper bottom. But it turns out that it's also slightly wider, so this one lined up into the actual mounting, into the mounting areas of the cooler, yeah, of the heat sink. So, Unfortunately, I'm going to have to put back on the original fan, um, which I say is not copper, but I'll also clean this up as well. See, I still do have the protective covering for it, or the client did. You see, that's the kind of client that looks after their system, you know, where most of us throw certain things out, they keep it, because I never know when I'm going to need it. Not that it's absolutely necessary, but each their own, yeah? Everyone's different, everyone's got their own method. There's nothing wrong with that. Variety, spice of life. So there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, I'm not uh, criticising it in any way, shape or form. But it's just to demonstrate that uh, different people view things differently. And what some of us may just decide we don't want to do, other people are quite happy to do. So I will apply um, new thermal compound. And you can see the muck coming off that. Now you don't have to get it till it's absolutely 100% spotless because nothing is absolutely 100% spotless. But we just want to make sure we get good contact so we get the best efficiency cooling we can. So like I say, this is not copper. Copper is actually a better heat dis dispersal material than this aluminum. So I'll try to get it as clean as possible so we get the best cooling as possible. My previous plan went awry, just to change out this uh, heat sink. But there you go, never mind. Actually, didn't have any heating issues. Heating wasn't the issue with this. But it's good to uh, provide it. Good customer service. So there we go, I think that'll do. So now I'm going to apply some new thermal compound. Yeah. New thermal grease. Trying to focus in there. It's nothing there. Uh, oops. This thing will focus. You just have to give it a second. That's what I mean about uh, because it's an auto focus, I don't have a way of manually focus this. It's only a little Panasonic uh, V160 camcorder. And I also have to get a move on because if the battery dies, well, I've got another battery. But with this, I don't have the option to actually uh, 
keep it plugged in while recording because it uses a USB port and it stops the recording. So let's get a move on before my battery dies. Okay, so my nitrile glove, one clean nitrile glove. Right handed, so I'll put it on my right hand. And that looks good to me. Let's see. Okay. Put that on there because I don't want to get it on my thing. Now this stuff is very messy. Yeah, right, so what I'm gonna do is paste it on. Actually I think I might need a bit more. Yeah. I think I mean I might need a touch more. Now I'm not going too too liberal but I'm not too stingy either. I just want to paint the surface so it just becomes so it's just not transparent. There you go. And then just you got this thermal paint, thermal grease. Uh, once heated up, will become very viscous. But I just want to cover the whole surface of the, the dye. I just want to cover all, use uh, apply it on all the eyes. Internal heat spreader. Okay, so I'll just get rid of my glove. Just rid of my glove. So I don't need that anymore. And then, if you notice also, I don't apply no thermal grease to the bottom of the the heat sink. So now I want the level this side or that side? Well, done before. Let's go and let's see. Yeah, there's nothing there, so we'll have to leave it this side. Where's the uh, CPU fan? This side. Look at that. So if I have it that way, I want to go that way. If I have it that way, I want to go that way. Okay, so seems like I'll have it the way I probably didn't want it the least. But never mind. It's okay guy, I'm just uh, just waffling to myself. Nothing new. That's one of the easiest times it's gone on. Okay, so now just do a bit of um, goes that way. Yeah, so I'll just do a bit of cable management on this. Yep, there we go. I'm happy with that. So I want. Cable tie here, so I'll give myself and this only needs one really. So Beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Let's get that in there. Yeah, that's looking good. I'll just cut that pigtail off. Excellent. Okay, so that's CPU heat sink back on. Thermal so we'll save applied and as mentioned previously, this has got four dim slots, two blue, two black. Um, the two blue is one channel, the two black one's another channel. Sorry, there you go. I'm in the two black one. So now this is running in what we call dual mode, uh, dual, dual uh, channel mode, yeah? So that's how you get dual channel mode. You don't put them side by side. If you put them side by side, then you actually lose the, um, the, 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 
the availability of dual tunnel and only running run in single channel. So that's dual channel. Right, next thing is what? Nothing else to go on there. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is prep the case and get it mounted. So let's push on. So I need my IO shield. Let's move that out of the way so we don't have no accidents. So, up comes my laser Susan. Yay. So, the problem with putting two and two together is sometimes you get four and sometimes you get 22. <laughs> hey. right. Case, let's get that move on. Okay, case on that. Um. Once again, I apologise for coming across the camera. Can't be helped. Right, I'm just going to lay this flat. Let me just take this off here a second. Mummy static mat. I'm just going to lay this flat, and what I want to see is where my standoffs are. Now, they should be in the same place. Well, yeah, they're in the same place. But what I want to make sure is that this board is very similar in every way. Stand up in the right place, and before I do that, let's put our IO shield in. Yeah, like I said, brand new. And we tested it, and when I opened it, I could see it hadn't been used. We insert the IO shield with the audio. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get my bearings with this camera. We, ins we install the IO shield with the port, the audio ports to the bottom. Yeah, so. With it stood up, you see this cut out here? Yeah, these IO ports are to the bottom. Now, unfortunately, um, this is take this side off, and then I can, uh, I can work from this side, otherwise, I'm going to have to work from the other side, and you can't see what I'm doing. I'll be just blocking the camera out. So, I'll just put this panel off. So, IO ports at the bottom, in the corner, It will take a little bit of manoeuvring. There we are. There we go. And I'm looking at this and it's even all the way around. It's protruding slightly. Right, that's that in. Okay. SSD in now, but I'll hang on. Yeah, because this has a weird mounting system. So, 
Right, board. I all shield. With this, you have to put it in slightly forward, and I think only some quite bottom in there. Yes, I can. And I'll just try line up. Da da da. This seems to be as expected. Right, so I'll go ahead and start to line this up. Now, what I'm going to be careful of here while I'm doing this, I'm just maneuvering into position while watching this cable. What I'm trying to do here is to ensure I've lift the case slightly, the board slightly up. And I'm going to, all right, I can see what, what problem I'm going to have. Right, I'm just lifting one of the, um, the grounding, just lifting them up so they don't foul the ports, which is what was happening. Very finicky, so you've got to be careful. Yeah, there you go. That was what was going on. Attention. I just need to come down this side a bit. It's just been a bit. You've just got to be very uh, careful with these guys because they are so fragile. I just don't want to take this out. This board is the way these. They are the culprits. They are my culprits. Right. There we go. I'll just check. Especially the uh, Ethernet one. Let's make sure nothing's. Uh... Yeah, I thought so. That middle one on the. And it's, it's well worth you taking your time doing this and checking and double checking because once you're in and you get lined up, you have to go through all this again if you get it wrong. And that's the last thing you want. Now, there is something foul in this which is telling me that something is sticking in something. Just checking. Yeah, yeah. That's good, that's good. So just, just something resisting on me. Right, 
Yeah, let's make sure that's that. And now I'm going to Oh, everything. Ah, there we go. Right, success. Beautiful. And absolutely every single port is cleared. Right, that's it. I'm sorry about that, but that is a stage that you need to be very, very cautious of. Because if I had just forced everything, not checked us putting it in, put it all in, secured it all down, uh, and then not checked it, sent it back to the customers, the customers come along and try to push a, a you know, a USB fast drive or his Ethernet cable into there and it can't get in because one of those grounding straps had made its way into the port. And also, what else could have happened is that it could have actually, if it had gone in where the pins are, it could actually cause a shot when I powered it up to test it. Um, and then that would have fried the system. And could you imagine trying to go through all what we've just been through? Yeah, so close and then yet so far, just for a, a second of carelessness. So, it's probably that, fussing about with that there, and though it seems to take a long time, doing that, actually, I'm now confident that everything's okay, and we shouldn't have any problems. So, it's, it's worth it. Sometimes, uh, long is short, if you know what I'm saying, if you get that meaning. So now, time to secure my baby. Okay, so I've not done it tight all the way down. If you see, it's still loose. So I can wiggle the board. But from what I can see from these uh, standoffs, they're all in the right place. They're all showing through. So there really shouldn't be any problems, but I'm not going to tighten every single one down just yet. I'm just going to get them started. I'm just going to get them started and then once we've got that done we'll pull through them all. There we go. Alright, so da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Need one here. That is not. Whoops. It's not. Like, look, there it is. There's a, there's a certain one that will in a certain spot. There we go. There we go. Right now, before I go any further, let's make sure I've not got the cables trapped under here. I don't want to be coming back. Now that's okay then. In the ground there. The good thing about that is, with it being a micro ATX board, I've got some room to run my cables. This board is not the best for cable management. Well, these systems never were, but. We do what we can with what we've got. And 
So guys, how have you been keeping during this pandemic? Keeping busy? It's going to rain again, it's getting a bit overcast, I'm losing a lot of light here. Now that one's not going in yet, it's lined up because I think it's the wrong screw. RAM's in, CPU's in, working in this case is not my greatest joy, I'll admit. Okay, now what I want here is, we'll just stand this up. See the lights going a bit. Sorry, <clears throat> my bad. Bring it forward again so you can see. I'm just right. I'm just uh, trying to keep the cables as original as possible, untangled. So I'm now attaching. I don't know if you can see. Oh, look at that rain out there! It's absolutely pouring it down now. Which is typical Manchester weather. Yeah. Sorry if things are a bit awkward for you guys. I need a better um, video system, recording system than this. Unfortunately, I'm not an expert, so I'm running the four pin EATX cable at the top here. Let's just make sure that, if I'm not mistaken, the clip should be up to the edge. Yes it is. You have to make sure, because on some boards they actually rotate it. Normally it's to the edge of the board, which should be standard. But you get some funky manufacturers think that they, the exception to the rule, and want to alter things. So it sometimes can make you, your task a bit more um, daunting than it needs to be. So as you can see, not much room for cable management, but what we've got we will use. What we've got we'll use. So I will Yeah, I can. Right, let's get the front umbilicals, let's get these umbilicals hooked up and we can get some, uh, let's get a move on, yeah? Yeah, 
Yes, she will get a move on. And I've just spotted something which I'm going to have to rectify now before I go any further. Which is that this decided to play hooky on me and slip off. Can you hear the rain guys? Can you hear the rain? Listen to the pouring rain, listen to it pour. Yeah. What happened there was one of the it's a 24 pin connector, but it's got a 20 pin and a 4 pin disconnected, and the 4 pin disconnected. It pushed out when I pushed it in, so I just had to reattach it and reseat it. So that's what I was doing there. Okay, now reset switch. Now the front panel connector is on this side on this one. And I've just got to remember. Right, so the unfortunate thing is I've got to keep the case flat while the hook up these umbilicals because I can't see um, the uh, I can't see the screen print while it's stood up so unfortunately you can't see what I'm doing but if, you, if you've done this before you know where I'm coming from so I'm just checking the back that's a power one there that's a re-switch power to this the plus to this side so re-switch bottom Next to the AD, HDD, so that's HDD, that's re switch. Brilliant. HDD LED, I've got HDD LED, HDD LED, power there, that goes there. I hope I'm getting all this right, because if I ain't, I'm going to look a fool. Then I want my power switch, that's my power switch in there. Before that, I want the H power LED. Do we have a power LED on this one? Can't remember. Is there another switch under there? What's this one here? Ah. Power LED, here we go. Power LED. So the power LED. It's the only one that I can actually. It's the only one that I can actually uh, put on the pins with the words upwards because it's actually two separate pins whereas the others are in a block and the way they design right and the power switch which was there which was we using yesterday so I shouldn't have any problems there okay then I've got the USB the front USB and then and then Yeah. Let's put that there. Pin, blank pin downwards, yeah. You've got to make sure you line these up right. Because I'm working at such an under angle. I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. Because I'm working at such an odd angle, I've got to make sure I get things right. And then the last one is me. Audio! There's the audio on this. Where's the audio on this? Front panel, is that audio front panel? Let me see, where's the pin on that? Second in, second in, that's the one. It's got a corner, you're in the bottom corner, yeah, but you just, you've always got to double check because you can't take anything for granted. Because, like I said, it's not my system. And if I damage it, it's going to be my bad to repair. Right, that's the umbilicals all hooked back up. Great, so the ATX power on, 24 pin power on, front panels on, front USB on, front USB on, 
CPU fan connected to a four pin header. Yes, I will tout those cables. So now what I need to do is um, attach the H uh, an SSD. Right. Attach an SSD. There is another drive which the client has, which is his data drive. And we're going to attach that here. Yeah. Now which one am I going to use? Am I going to use this bottom one? keeping the cables tidy. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not indeed? Why not indeed? Um, where's his... Yeah, keep it all there because it's hard drive. Right, okay, yeah. So there's other drives in there. Okay. Little bag of tricks. Okay, let me entertain you. Not. Where's those, um, those are running around me? Yes. Let me just check that out. Will that be longer than the last? To Let me just check that out. Okay. Not my say if it will rage. Okay. Let's get some work done. They keep saying but not doing. Keep saying but not doing. Okay. Just gotta find the uh, well, it's too high up there son. Just finding the um, location, the location for the vocation. That's not the right hole, that's not the right screw, Michael. I'm just, uh, oh. da, 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 you dumb cough. Yeah, it helps if you get it in there. if you get in the right hole. Yeah, that's the only thing with these kind of uh, cases and working with these kind of uh, 
equipment, line up the scrolls ain't that easy as it looks. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's good when a plan comes together, but it ain't half a pain when it's making you look like an idiot. And let's put the other one in. And we've got our secured all four corners. I'm not seeing any yet. Oh, oh. You can tell them. There you go, you can tell them apart. There you go. No need to. The good thing about SSDs, unlike mechanical drives, there's no um, there is no issues about heads hitting platters or the weights mounted, which sometimes can be an issue with uh, mechanical drives, especially in a case like this is very, this is very flimsy and can't cope with much um, jostling. So right now, good, and then we're ready. We'll just connect this up now. I need a set, oh, you know what I forgot? You know what I forgot to bring? Well, I'm not forgot to bring, I know actually I've got one in the box here, haven't I? SATA cable, it's in the box. Yes, 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 yes. A new one. So I don't want none of them. I don't want no Molex. God, I wish I'd get rid of Molex. I wish to get rid of Molexes now. Right, so, da 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 da. In the right, right orientation. There we go, that's that connected. I'll tie that down. That will look neat when I've finished. Stopped. Sorry guys, back to you again. Bad habit, keep forgetting. Do apologise. Oh, it's two. Oh, it's two SATA cables. Well, that's okay. That's good. Put that other one back in the box. Need that. Right, and more or less done. So I'm going to because this is there. Yeah, I'll use that. I'll do that because this is there. Let me see how this is. Angled. If it's angled like that, it's coming out like that, and it's so that's no good to me, is it? So that won't have to go in the board. Okay, I was looking at putting the 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 oh they give you two ah they give you two types right they give you two types of SATA cable on here. Give you one with a right angle, yeah, to a straight, and then they give you another one, which is just straight to a straight. See that? One's at a right angle and straight, yeah. And if you look at that end, this is the one with a right angle. You look at that end; it's a straight end. If you look at this one, on the straight end, it's also a straight end, yeah. So you've got two, and I was actually thinking of putting this right angle one onto this SSD, but unfortunately it's coming out of the case, out of this side, so it won't sit right. It's coming out, the way it's got to be attached, it would be coming out of the case like that, so it's no good. And if I did, I could get away with that, well then that's, 
That's putting stress on um, bending the cable in different sections. So I don't have to use the straight ones. It's just the way it's coming out and it puts stress on the cable. I'm trying to uh, make the system as efficient as possible um, without the need for any further intervention from me. Uh, so there we go, that's on. And because that's a straight edge, I'm going to go straight down on this side. And that's our storage back on, so just get the windows installed. I will get windows installed, and then obviously we'll then have to um, confer, communicate with Microsoft. It'll be an automated thing, um, because obviously we have now put a new board in. I'm just going to say, oh, I recognise that hardware, but I don't recognise that. Motherboard? Is that a new motherboard, son? Are you trying to install it on another PC? Are you trying to install this illegally? You want to say, no, my friend. We had an issue with the motherboard, so we've had to change it. Oh, right, so that's that ready. Stop your waffling, Michael. That's that ready. That's good. There's not a lot of thing I can do it there. I'm tidy that up after. I'll tell you that up around there. Keep that there. Right, okay, so let's get this back panel back on because I do not need it anymore. I do not need to be around here anymore. What I've got to do, right, I'll just put a just put a cable tie around here just to. Just to keep it neat. Yeah, just keep everything tidy, neat. Take the pigtail off. sharp edges there. Okay, we'll just see if there's another way of putting it. Unfortunately with, case, with some of these cases you have limited cable options so you've got to make the best of what you've got. Plus also the type of power supply you've got and how the cables are can be... I'm just going to put this down, it's going to make my job easier. I'm sorry guys. Right, okay. Just check. With that, um, this by the way has got a clutch on it, and it stops. I've got it set on uh, three, and it stops when it gets there. something and just make sure it's not there. That's the cool thing about electric drivers. It saves you a lot of repetitive strain injuries, doesn't it? No, I've just I'm just not happy with this panel. There we go, that's better. I just wasn't happy with the panel, it just didn't seem to be sitting right. There we go, that's it. Sit. Just didn't seem to be sitting right. I just noticed that when I stood it up. It felt like it went on right. Oops. Perhaps if you were uh, engaged the right uh, direction for your screwdriver. And 
now. And now what I'm going to do is get windows installed. Should have to do windows. And then I'll finish the rest up off camera. I'll finish the rest up off camera and um, get it sent back off to the clients. Right, now it seems that I have, any time I want to do stuff, there always seems to be some sort of issue. When I do this stuff off camera, maybe it's because, maybe it's the camera, maybe it's a psychological thing. When I do this stuff off camera, it's pretty quick and straightforward. But now that I'm doing it on camera and recording it to put up on YouTube, it seems I have issues, doesn't it? But that's good, because sometimes you do have issues, so it's real life. It's real life. Right, so let's get this set up and then we're going to get windows installed. Right, so now I'm going to um, get windows installed. So let's not make the classic mistakes of not putting our video output cable in, yes? So let's get this plugged in first. This board does support HDMI as well as VGA and HDMI, VGA and DVI-D. So it does support three connections, which is good. Um, let us get a keyboard and mouse. With a bit of luck, we should have no uh, battery issues this time, yeah? Because I've only just put some new batteries in. If you remember, it died on me. Which was very embarrassing, and I do apologise. But these things happen in life. If we knew what was around the corner, we'd get boring. Life would get boring, wouldn't it? Because we wouldn't know what to expect. Which we don't know what to expect, should I say. But we'd know what to expect if we knew what was around the corner. And then that would become boring, because we know it's going to happen before it happened. Right, this, this is a keyboard and mouse set. Uh, this ties together so it needs one dongle. Now there is an actual, I've been looking into an actual uh, rechargeable set where you don't actually have these batteries, it's got the lithium battery inside the keyboard and mouse and you just charge it by USB. I'm looking into getting that, I prefer that instead of having to keep messing about with batteries. Right, so that's our keyboard and mouse. Got my windows, install a disc, and if a lot of you are aware of a gentleman called Kerry Holzman, he's got a thing called a Win Optimizer application which I purchased, and I've got it on my flash drive. It's part of my utilities. It's part of my um, battle to configure it, not battle, but my tools to help me configure it PCs to get them as optimal as, as possible. Right, so, we have got our VGA cable in this time, so we shouldn't have that issue, what we had yesterday, well, yeah. And, let me just put the monitor, I need to see the monitor myself, but I also want you to get to see it. Right, so let's put some power to the system. Now, um, there's nothing here actually to see, so I can actually, I can actually just put this. No, I'm gonna plug that in. It's in the off position. It is in the off position. I can check in. All right, plug that in. I'm just wondering if I need to keep this up here because there's nothing to see. I'm just gonna be installing Windows. And all you want to see is what's happening on the screen, isn't it? Making sure it's installed. You've seen what's in. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll put this down here. Just put this on the floor in front of the camera. I'll just bring this screen a bit closer. There we go. So you can see what's happening. And we'll go ahead and get my window. 
there's this ready. No, in fact, um, no. In fact, I'll leave it up so you can see it. I'll leave it up. I'll just um, rearrange things a little bit better so you can see. So, if I put I put the PC up here, like so, run the cables behind the monitor. Okay, guys, I've just got myself organised here slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things have to swap and change. Right, put that behind the monitor. That's just a power cable for that. This, right, okay. Yeah, okay, we can see what's going on now. And I just want some room for my keyboard and mouse. We've got the top here. Just on this side so I can see. Right, okay, nothing's on at the moment. Right, everything's plugged in. Keyboard and mouse in. VGA cable this time so we can actually see. Those are plugged in. Right, I'm just going to turn the main power on. And what we're looking for is the screen indicator telling you it's, it's on. And then you'll see a display there and it's telling you no, no signal. But that's okay. So, yes, it's just activated, and then we should get a thing here saying no VGA signal. There you go, power saver mode. All right, okay. So I'm happy with that. So let us let me put the feet up on this because I like the feet up. I don't like to work too. Um, I don't like it too flat. Let me just uh, move it a bit closer to there a second. So we've got a bit of room here. Okay, um, now I'm going to power her up. In fact, I'm going to put my this is a Sunday set stream US 3.1 flash drive. In fact, I'm going to pull that in, and I'm going to use a fast port on the back. Simply because I'm gully and I don't see the point in messing about. So I'll just stick in a port on the back there, and power on the. Power supply on the back of the PC. Nothing's come on, which is great. That's what I like to see. And if I've connected on my front panels correctly, they should now boot up when I press the button. And it does. Now this may either go now this will either go into the BIOS or it'll say there's no boot drive, boot menu, or it'll find the right no. Press the key. Right, so what I need to do is to mash up Bill. Um, is it F12 for boot device? F8, boot menu, F8. Right, okay, I've got it now. Win, hold, Bill. And we want to be mashing F8. And see if it see if it recognizes my flash drive. Yeah, there you go. USB sand disk. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now you notice I've also not connected up my Ethernet cable because I don't want to. go that's my Windows 10 disk there because I don't want it to um, ask me to create a Microsoft account which I don't want to it's not my machine I don't well I do have a Microsoft account but it's, it's my Microsoft account and I only use it for certain things so I'm going to show you how to install Windows right now make sure you read everything before you continue don't just press next 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 so the language to install is British United Kingdom, not British, not not British US, yeah, United Kingdom. Time and currency format, English United Kingdom, keyboard or input method, United Kingdom. So we're happy with that. Okay, so now we click next. Then it's going to say install see you've got a choice there, repair your computer now. Well we're not repairing the computer, it's a new computer. So we're going to install now.
Right, then it's saying please activate Windows, yeah? So if you read this, if you've done this before, you know, if this is the first time you install Windows on this PC, you're installing a different edition, or install a different edition, then you need to enter a valid Windows product key. Well, if you look right down here, it says I don't have a product key. So I click that, I don't have a product key. Now it's asking me, well, when you do have a product key, which win, which edition of Windows are you going to be putting on? Well, this is Windows Pro, not Home. It gives you the option to put in several different uh, versions of Windows, but I'll be using Windows 10 Pro, 64-bit, of course, no 32-bit no, no more. Then we click Next, so make sure Windows 10 Pro is selected. And uh, then we click, can you see that, guys? I mean, just... Uh, I try not to zoom in too much because then you start getting flicker. Let me see if I can zoom you in a bit. I'm trying to do it so you don't get, um, it doesn't become too distorted. Okay. Right, yeah, so you zoom in on the screen because that's what we want. We just need to see what's happening. Let me just, uh, I'm trying to angle it so you can see, but I need to see it as well. <laughs> Make sure I don't hit any incorrect keys, yeah? Okay, so the bit of look, bit of look now you can see. There you go, turn that a bit. Okay, right, okay. So Windows 10 Pro and then click next. Right, you've got to accept this, otherwise you can't go any further. So you need to accept the license key, click next. Um, and it, I'll leave you to read all that, yeah. Uh, and probably I'll see you this time next week when you finish reading it, okay? So we click next. And upgrade Windows, keep file, but well, we're not. We're doing a custom install. Windows only. So there you go. And they shows us our solid state drive that I've put in. Yeah, which you know is a 240 gig. So we're doing it on there. So that's the drive. So all we do is click next because it's got no partitions, nothing on it. And now what Windows is going to do is going to partition it and everything, install Windows files, and then carry on with the setup. Yeah, so while that's happening, I'll just go tidy up a few bits and I'll be back in a sec. This thing is so quiet for a small, it's not what I call um, one of the better cases. I find it quite flimsy actually, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's not a case that I would actually purchase for myself. But um, for this case, it's absolutely so quiet, it's unbelievable. Okay, so we reboot, so we reboot. So as you can see, it's not taking really too long, even for a, a system of, of this age. But don't forget, we're not using a mechanical drive. If, that was a mechan if we were using a mechanical drive, I don't even think we'd be at this stage yet. But because we're using an SSD drive, 
See, it adds a bit of oomph to it. And then what I'll do, when, when I take this back to the client, well, the client himself will do it, he, he's quite competent. Um, he had them, he, he's, his original driver, he's kept, because it's got OS on it, has got information on it, obviously he doesn't want to um, be seen or, you know, anyone else having access to it, which is quite understandable. So, I did suggest to him when we were, we were in conference, when we were thinking of all the different options for the system, that um, it boots from an SSD drive and then uses hard drive as a data drive for his, for his videos and files and all that. And he says, yeah, I went with that, so that's why I put an SSD drive in. When he, when he gets it back, he will then lift the data off. He will then um, lift his data, sort out what he wants, take it off that drive, reformat it because it's actually got Windows on it. He'll then reformat it and then use his mechanical drive as a, uh, as a data drive. And then later on, he can either reach out to me or he can probably do it himself. Go in there, go and get a solid state drive and put it in as a as a data drive. But like he said, he, he's he, he, for what he wants. He doesn't need uh, he doesn't need sort of anything more. He said he's hoping to uh, see his day out with this and vice versa. I don't think that's a bad thing because it means uh, it keeps it at a landfill and if it's, if it's serving its purpose then why not? If it's serving its purpose why not? So kudos to him yeah kudos to him for thinking of the environment not just himself as well as himself he's happy with it it's protecting the environment Okay, so now let's see now. Let's start. Region correct. United Kingdom, yes. Right, is this the right keyboard layout? United Kingdom, yes. Um, do you want to add second keyboard skip? Let's connect it to the network. No, so if you look there, it's saying. Ethernet not connected. It wants you to connect to the network, but the moment you do that, it's going to want you to create a Microsoft account, and it's going to want to do all sorts of uh, fandangle things in the background. So we're not yet. So if you look down here to the left, it says, I do not have internet. Well, that is actually a hyperlink. It's not just text. It's an actual hyperlink. And if you click on it, you see, you see how the point, you see how the point changes to a hand? Because it's actually an, uh, an hyperlink. I do not have internet. You click on that. It says just a moment, then it says there is more to discover when you connect to the internet. It's trying to force you to connect to the internet. See? It's trying to force and it's telling you, oh, you've got advanced security, you know, it's giving you all sorts of, um, of reasons why you should connect to the internet. But we not want to connect to the internet. It's it, even got in a big brown, in a big blue, a big blue box, white letters, connect now, and it, you know, so you were thinking, oh, I'll go put my internet in then because it wants me to connect, it won't go any further. Well, it will actually. If you look to the left again, it says continue with limited setup. Now, don't worry, it doesn't mean you won't get all the, the, the functions of Windows. You still will. Um, but what, what you're telling it is, I don't want to connect to the internet. I don't care what you say, I'm not connecting to the internet. So it says, well, if you continue, you're going to have limited functions, limited setup. Don't let that scare you. Just click it. Again, that's a hyperlink. So it says, who's going to use this PC? Well, obviously it's my client, but I'm not going to put his name in, um, you know, because he asked me not to. So I'm just going to put user in, and then he can change it when he gets it back. So I'll just put user. Okay, and click next. I don't want a password, he can do that himself. Right. Use online speaking recognition? No, don't use online speaking. I'm not accept 
It's asking you for all the things. These are all things that Microsoft wants to do to snoop on you. That's one of the reasons why it's asking you to connect to the internet. Because the moment you connect to the internet, it starts collecting data, data about you, you know, your users and all the activity. By having limited setup, which you haven't, you've got, you've got, you will have all the setup you want. Don't you worry about that. But we're going through this process. Plus, also, if anything sort of like goes wrong, if if say actually the board decide that it's going to die, or something happens. If you'd like entered your product key at the start of it, it would have, uh, and then connected to the internet, it would immediately have activated and all the rest of it. And then say, say you know the problem with the board, and you have to RMA the board back. Yeah, you get another board. He's going to say, well, hang on, this is the third board you're trying to you're trying to activate with this key and all the rest of it. So that's why you do certain things. If you follow this 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 method, certain things, um, you will get the best. You'll have a a more a more seamless installation. Um, you sort of like get the, the best options for your system and if anything do go awry, yeah, you're not already committed in certain ways. You, you can still rectify it without actually being committed to say I'm to buy another product key because Windows have said this. Even though if you just phone up Win, uh, Microsoft and tell them, you know, explain the situation, they will do it. But what I'm saying is it ends up giving you a longer process that you don't need to. So if you do it this way, you find the process um, a lot, lot easier. So now it says, um, let Microsoft and apps use your location. No, accept that. Um, find my device, not at the moment, no. Can't find my back. If you say yes, I know it's going to ask you to connect, connect up to the internet so you can do it. Anything you say yes to is, it's going to, it's going to want you to connect to the internet because it's going to say, well, you can't carry on without this and you'll have to do the installation again, which you want, but it's going to tell you certain things. Uh, send uh, diagnostic data to Microsoft. Basic, except improving. No, we don't want the winking. Um, get tailored experience with that. No, we don't want that. See, it's making jump through a lot of hoops, and a lot of people just keep pressing yes, 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 and and before they know it, you know, they wonder why they're getting certain emails and certain things, and they wonder why certain things are known about them, and they're getting all sorts of rubbish. It's because. They don't actually take the time to read this. They just want to get the, the installation done. They just click yes, yes, yes to everything. And it's not yes, yes, yes. It's actually no, no, no. Right. Do more across the... No, we don't. No, thank you. Uh, let Cortana. We don't need that Cortana. Not now. Right, we're getting a few things to talk. Now, I can actually remove my um, flash drive because it actually, actually finished with the flash drive. I'm just going to let it. Uh, I'm just going to let it finish doing what it's got to do. So you can see that really, even for even for a, a system this old, with the right hardware, you can see why it's still he's still quite happy with it because it it's not it's not slouch by any means. I mean, it's no greyhound, but it's no slouch by any means, and you can see here it's. Um, it's, uh, it's it's quite responsive, fairly responsive for for a PC of this age, and because I say we've got a solid state drive in there instead of a, a hard drive, which would be a lot slower because of read write access time. Um, you know, it, it makes the system quite uh, smooth, and it's also quiet because there's no mechanical drive spinning up. So that's another that's another reason why we text half on about solid state drives. It's more reliable, it's quieter, and it's more, and again, it's more energy efficient. And especially if for those that do not want to like leave their system on all the time, it's, which is something we recommend as techs to people that are, uh, are using mechanical drives for both the operating system and for data. Because as previously said, most hard drive failures start at boot up. So you can see we're there at the desktop now. Yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to unplug my flash drive. And there it is. Eject extreme. There you are. Safe to remove the drive. There you go. So that's that's my flash drive. So that's that done. Now, what I'm going to do, now what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to get some updates for this board. 
So now, only now, am I going to plug in my Ethernet. So that's the installation done of Windows. So we've got that done, no problems. Yeah, we've got, we've got that done with no issues so far. So everything's looking decent. So I'm now, what I'm now doing, um, I'll just zoom back a bit now. I've seen that. I'll just zoom back a bit now so you can see what I'm doing next. I'm going to connect up my Ethernet. Sorry, once again, I do apologise for uh, walking across. So the next bit is just basically um, PC maintenance. I say PC maintenance. I'm going to get all my updates and the likes. So let's plug. I'm not put, fully pushed it in yet, but there should be that bulb there. Shows you I'm not connecting to the internet. Now providing you can find the drivers, the basic drivers in Windows work. There you go, network. See? Do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable? No. You see now it knows that we've got internet connections on. No, I don't want it to be discovered. See, it's all it was setting up with the network. It was setting up network. See, it's there, internet. I could just tell it was setting up search for display drivers. Right, okay. So, what's happening now, believe it or not? Let me just close that out. What's happening now? You see the activity light. You can see it on the front of the, the system. It's flickering. Um, what's going on there, believe it or not? Even though I've not clicked um, update Windows yet. Windows is actually updating. It's actually, it is actually now um, searching in the background on the net, getting old drivers and everything. You see before there, it says device is ready, keyboard. Well, that, that's for the mouse and keyboard. It's just going to got that. But it also said it was searching for display drivers. Yeah, keyboard setting up device. We set up the keyboard. Se searching for display drivers. You see there. So that's what's happening in the background now. So that's what's going on in the background there, searching for drivers. Now I'm actually going to go into, um, I'm actually going to go down here, settings, and um, then I'm just going to expand that out a minute. And uh, updating security, and your device is missing, right, check for updates. Now we're going to start. I mean, it is actually doing updates in the background. But then when I say check for updates, it's going to have a list there of updates that it's been searching for. It's telling me that there's no updates available looking to, for new updates. But at the same time, it's constantly itself. Your device is missing updates, uh, uh, important security and quality fixes, which it is doing in the background. But then when I when I now click this, we're going to see a list of updates that it's going to want. So we're going to check a second, checking for updates, and then you're going to see a list. And as you can see there, never mind, um, I know there's a red text there saying this and that, but it's just to be expected from Windows. But as you can see now, you can see all the text there, that those are all updates. So it's telling me updates available. So that's what it was doing in the background when I, as soon as I put the cable in, the Ethernet cable in, that's what it was checking for. And that's why you've got that. So, we we'll leave the windows now to do that. So this this uh, is going to take um, well, hopefully not too long with this system, but we'll see. Right, so there we go. Windows up to date. It says, I'll just do another check. So I'll just do a check again, just to make sure we've got all the updates. Checking for updates. So 
So we just do that, yep. See, right, okay, so it says there you're up to date. So let's see if we've got all the drivers. So now what I'm going to do, I'm now going to check to see if we've got all the drivers for this board. And remember, I said I won't want to use a disc, you normally get it all off the web. So, what we do here, um, if we just right click the Windows button, or the Windows Start button, and we look for Device Manager, click that. And then what we're looking for, as you can see here, we're looking for any items with exclamation marks against them. So let's look at audio and input. Yep, all clear. Computer. Yep, all clear. See, there's no, usually if there's an exclamation mark, the actual item will be open with the exclamation mark against it. We're just checking ATI. That's the built-in uh, graphics on the board. So that's the built-in board. Is that what it is? So yeah, we, you can see we've got it. So we've got everything. Uh, keyboard and mouse is just plug-in keyboard. So yeah, um, as you can see, it's uh, the processor running is an AMD quad core. Yep, it's a quad core processor. So software devices. Let's check. Yeah, so we're good to go, guys. We're good to go. So that's it. Okay. So that's the board. So the board installed. All the updates done. Um, and then all that's left for me to do now is to um, pack it, wrap it and tap it, yeah, as the saying goes. So that's it guys, so there you go, so that's replacement board done, replacement board come in. So just to recap, especially for anyone that's just seen this part of the video, not the first part, just to recap. Client with a faulty board, had to replace the board. Um, Unfortunately, this incident happened during the pandemic. Um, problems get involved. The board that we actually um, went online to order was actually out of stock. Had to wait for a while. Obviously, I communicated this between the customer, communicate this to the customer, and we communicated to each other. And okay, we went along with everything. So it was prepared to wait. Finally the board came, but it was a board from Amazon Warehouse, so we didn't know what state the board was in, uh, whether it, it, was, it was a used board or not. Anyway, it turned out the board had never been used, so my, so my theory is that it probably was ordered. Either it was ordered and the order was cancelled, or it was ordered, and as with Amazon sometimes, um, you know, the driver sort of like probably tried to live it somewhere where he shouldn't have done you know, got their address mixed up or it got lost in post, whatever. And after a certain time when things get lost in post, if it sits in the post office and not collected, it's then shipped back to its it, its um, original sender, which in this case was Amazon. Because it's shipped back, Amazon don't put it back in stock as new, even though it's never been used and it is new. They then put it in what they call Amazon Warehouse, which means it, it's um, end of line, it's a discontinued line. So they sell it off, so it comes from the Amazon Warehouse. Got it on the warehouse, got it from Amazon Warehouse. Like I said, we didn't know what state it was in. You see, we took we'd seen we took it out here, tested it, was happy with it, and then now it's all back in the case, assembled, all the updates applied, and now we're ready to go. So that's it guys. I will uh, do all the cable management off camera and all the rest of it. You don't need to see that, it's boring stuff. Um, and until my next video. Bye for now, take care, look after each other, be kind to each other, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now, bye.